And here we go. Uh, lesson four. Lesson four is going to deal with these things called Taylor polynomials. Taylor polynomials named for the mathematician Brooke Taylor. Um, they give us a structure to study polynomials that approximate a function. And we've taken a look at polynomials that approximate a function. We've used power series to do it. Um, but really, we've been stuck with geometric series. So I'd kind of like to broaden the base for us and take a look at, well, what happens if we can't use geometric series. So I actually have a warm-up for us, a little something for us to consider. I would like you to construct a polynomial. It's a fourth degree polynomial. There's some number, some number times x, some number times x squared, some number times x cubed, some number times x to the fourth, such that p of 0 is 1, p prime of 0 is 2, p double prime of 0 is 3, p triple prime of 0 is 4, and the fourth derivative of p evaluated at 0 is 5. Take a moment, hit the pause button, construct such a polynomial. Because if you can do that, you are going to get the rhythm of where we're going. Did, did you hit the pause button and do it? We, we really wanted you to hit the pause button and do it. All right. If that's the case, let's see. P of 0. If I substitute 0 for x, the only thing that falls out is a sub 0. And that's, by definition, 1. Now, p prime of x, p prime of x, I just take derivatives of everybody. Derivative of a0 is, is gone. Uh, derivative a1x is a1. Then I get 2a2x plus blah, 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 blah. Uh, the last term would be 4a4x cubed, and that means that p prime at 0, well, that drops out, those drop out, that drops out. I'm just left with a1, and that, according to the problem, is 2. So then I go a little bit further with it, and I take a look at p double prime. p double prime is going to be 2a2 plus and so on until the last guy is 12a4x squared. And that means that p double prime of 0, this drops out, those drop out, that's the only guy that's left, that's 2a2, which according to the problem is 3, which means that a2 is 3 halves. And then p triple prime, p triple prime, that's, that drops out, that's 6a3 plus 24a4x, which means p triple prime of 0 is, well, that drops out 6a3. By the definition of the problem, that is 4 which means that a3 is 4 over 6, or if you like, 2 thirds. Fourth derivative is just 24a4. Uh, ooh, and according to the problem, that's equal to 5. So a4 is 5 over 24. Now, here's the crazy thing. If I can do this process for some generic function p, let's pretend that instead of doing this, this meaningless exercise, I was instead looking to model another function, call that function f, and that function f is 1 when x equals 0, and its slope is 2 when x equals 0, and its second derivative is 3 when x equals 0, and so on. What if I want to use p to model this f function? Well, I have a process by which I can get as many derivatives to match as I like. And this process is the process that will give us Taylor polynomials. So here's the thing I want you to see. 
your denominators. Your denominators. Yes, there's a denominator. Yes, there's a denominator. Those denominators, how do they connect to the subscripts there? And the answer is not very obvious at all. Not very obvious at all. Um, but the thing I want to point out to you is that the coefficient of the term x to the n is the nth derivative evaluated at 0 divided by n factorial. Your denominators. In, in this case, we have 0 factorial. In this case, we have one factorial. In this case, we well, that was two cases moving. We've got two factorial is two, three factorial is six, four factorial is 24. In each case, the coefficient of the term x to the n is the nth derivative evaluated at zero. That's what your numerators are. This is the nth derivative evaluated at zero divided by n factorial. If we can get that rhythm down, we are in great shape. Here's what I mean. Construct a polynomial of degree 4 that matches ln of 1 minus 3x at x equals 0 through its first four derivatives. Which means that I want the polynomial to agree with ln of 1 minus 3x and I want the derivatives to be the same, and the second derivatives to be the same, and the third derivatives to be the same, and the fourth derivatives to be the same. I want them to match. So I'm thinking to myself, self, this is my function. y prime is 1 over 1 minus 3x times negative 3. My second derivative is, let's see, that's going to bring a negative 1 power down. 3 over 1 minus 3x squared times negative 3. Right? Right. And then the third derivative, let's see, that's negative 9 times 1 minus 3x to the negative 2. So the negative 2 comes down in front decrease the power by 1, multiply by the derivative, that's negative 54 over 1 minus 3x cubed, and then the fourth derivative, that's a 1 minus 3x cubed, so the negative 3 comes down in front, that's 162 over 1 minus 3x to the fourth times the derivative of the inside, don't even ask me what that is. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to build a polynomial that matches ln of 1 minus 3x at x equals 0, which means I have to know what y of 0 is. I'll give you a hint, that's 0. I have to know what y prime of 0 is, that's negative 3. I have to know what y double prime of 0 is, that's negative 9. I have to know what y triple prime of 0 is. That's negative 54. And I have to know what y quadruple prime of 0 is. That is a Roman numeral 4. Some people write it that way. That's negative 486. So then I use the thing that was written in red over here. The coefficient of the term x to the n is the nth derivative evaluated at 0 over n factorial. So let's put it all together. Let's do it in purple because we're putting together the blues and the reds. My polynomial is going to be this guy plus, now I need 
that divided by 1 factorial as a coefficient of x to the first. And then I'm going to need that over 2 factorial as a coefficient of x squared. Then I'm going to need that over 3 factorial as a coefficient of x cubed. And then I'm going to need that over 4 factorial as a coefficient of x to the fourth. And then we try to simplify. That's negative 3x minus 9 halves x squared minus 9x cubed minus some x to the fourthy thing. 243 over 12. No, that can go that can go further. 3 goes in, that's 81 fourths x to the fourth. What do I mean? So negative 3x minus 9x squared over 2 minus 9x cubed minus 81x to the fourth over 4 as it compares to ln of 1 minus 3x graph. But I'm only looking around x equals 0, so let's let's zero in on that. Ha! Ah, yeah, 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 I know, I know, that's embarrassing. Look how close they are around x equals 0. Around x equals 0, pretty darn close. And we only have four derivatives matching. What if we had more? That's not bad. This p of x, this p of x is what we call the fourth order Taylor polynomial of y equals ln of 1 minus 3x at x equals 0. Of course, it's a polynomial because it stops. If we were to put a plus dot, 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 that would represent a Taylor series. So, I'm going one more with you. I'm going one more. Find the seventh order Taylor polynomial for y equals sine x at x equals 0. Sine x. Sine x means I've got to have the function and I've got to have seven derivatives. Seven derivatives. Some people put the parentheses with the 4 up there to indicate fourth derivative. It's better than Roman numerals. You're bored by now. I can't write any faster. So I want to know what all of these things are at x equals 0. Y, y of 0 is 0. Y prime of 0 is the cosine of 0. That's 1. Y double prime of 0 is 0. Y triple prime of 0 is negative 1. The fourth derivative at 0 is 0. The fifth derivative of 0 is 1. The sixth derivative at 0 is 0. The seventh derivative at 0 is negative 1. So I've got to remember how we put together these Taylor polynomials. These Taylor polynomials come together. Uh, in fact, let's do a more formal notation. The Taylor polynomial of order 7 is, I need this guy. Well, that's easy. I just won't write them. Ah, then I need this 
over 1 factorial as a coefficient of x. Then I need that over 2 factorial as a coefficient of x squared. No biggie. Then I need this over... Oh, no. Then I need this over 3 factorial as a coefficient of x cubed. Then I need that over 4 factorial as a coefficient of x to the 4th. Won't write it. This over 5 factorial as a coefficient of x to the 5th. This over 6 factorial as a coefficient of x to the 6th. And this over 7 factorial as a coefficient of x to the 7th. I have generated a Taylor polynomial of order 7 x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 5th over 5 factorial minus x to the 7th over 7 factorial and I bet you that you could generate the Taylor polynomial for any order we choose for the function y equals sine x and this 7th degree polynomial agrees with sine x Function value, first derivative, second derivative, all the way up to seventh derivative, all match at x equals zero. So you get a really, really good approximation. The thing I want to leave you with what about the cosine function? Can you generate the eighth degree? eighth order Taylor polynomial for cosine x. You're going to use a process very similar to this one. Of course, there is a shortcut that we should probably talk about, and we'll do that when we gather tomorrow. Thanks, everybody. See you then.